Longleaf pine used to stretch, you know, from Virginia to Texas, and it's like disappearing. It's almost gone. It's such a beautiful, amazing tree. It's the tree that built the South. In Savannah, the warehouses and houses built before the 20th century were generally built from longleaf timber. Sturdier, denser, more beautiful, less knots. Longleaf is such a strong tree, and that's one thing that attracts us to it. These trees were turpentine, where they would gather the naval stores up into the 70s. You see these marks here in the tree? So these hatch marks, kind of called, they look like whiskers, it's kind of cat faces. And this is where the, the, uh, the rosin would be gathered, and they'd hang a cup or a metal tin on this uh, nail here to capture the, the rosin coming out of the tree. The high quality of its timber, straw, and turpentine ultimately led to the decline of longleaf pine from an estimated high of 90 million acres upon European settlement in this region to around 3 million acres by the middle of the 20th century. But the allure of longleaf goes beyond its commercial value. The longleaf pine tree is a key component of the longleaf pine ecosystem which is home to 26 threatened or endangered species and nearly 900 different plant species. The longleaf ecosystem is just an amazingly diverse uh, system. It's actually at a, at a square meter, you know, at that small a scale, it's as diverse plant-wise as the Amazon rainforest. And then if you start getting out to a bigger scale, you know, it's not as diverse. But the native grasses and flowers that are um, underneath these trees, it's, it's really a pine savanna. And they're just these gorgeous plants, gorgeous flowers, and all the insects that, that go with it. And of course, with longleaf ecosystem, it's really a mosaic because you actually have bogs that are interspersed. And then you have oak trees scattered through here too. So it's just an amazing, amazing uh, rich tapestry of plants and um, insects and invertebrates and birds and all kinds of things. For all of our lives, we've been taught that fire is devastating to forests. And while that can be true, the longleaf ecosystem needs fire to survive. You see the char on this tree? A lot of people might look at this tree and think it's damaged. Not at all. Longleaf is a fire forest that needs fire. This char is from one of the recent prescribed burns. This tree is evolved with fire and has adaptations like super thick bark. In fact, its, it's little seedlings need mineral soil in order to germinate. And that happens when a fire kind of cleans out the understory and allows those little babies a chance to grow. Every couple of years, the forests are burned with prescribed fires to maintain good wildlife habitat and to return the much needed nutrients to the soil. The plants and animals that live in longleaf habitats are all fire adapted. The animals take cover ahead of the fire and the perennial plants that live in the ground cover all bounce back quickly following the fire with fresh growth and flowers. It's hard to explain to some people, and even some family members, why we are growing longleaf on some of our land instead of all, say, loblolly or slash, because, as they say, plant them thick and cut them quick, and you see a quicker return. But we're in it for the long run. So now we're back where we're hoping to burn more, look after our longleaf, and develop the ecosystems through restoration, conservation, and good stewardship. California has its giant redwoods. The south has its longleaf pine ecosystem. And the more you spend time in it, and the more you learn about it, and the more you come to love it, the more it expands your soul. There are so many reasons to care about Longleaf. We invite you to contact us at the Longleaf Alliance to learn more about this great ecosystem and to find out how you can get involved in the restoration 
of this iconic southern forest. Way down south in Baxley, Georgia is a place called